Hi, oh, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. There have been some heavy and thundery downpours in parts of the UK during the last couple of days, but is that setting the theme for the next two weeks or not? Well, let's see how things may be shaping up. Now, here's the view at 18 GMT on Tuesday the 13th of May. There are some heavy showers there still in southern parts of England, maybe South Wales too, but it's high pressure which is dominant. It's centred to the north of the UK and through the coming days there is a lot of dry weather around. As we head into the weekend, much of a muchness really, if there's a northeasterly flow, so temperatures could well be dipping as we head through the first few days but it's staying settled. Just running this through to conclusion, what we see is there are some subtle changes. There could be some showery conditions developing in places, but it's mostly settled. By the end of the sequence, Wednesday the 21st, at least according to this computer model, remember high pressure centered a little bit further west, but it's still having a good deal of influence. Here's the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence for UK here inside a red circle. The yellows and oranges indicating quite warm air aloft. And as I run it, it just reinforces the message that high pressure will be staying dominant through the first week. What does all that mean though in terms of the actual conditions we can expect on a day by day basis? Here are some charts to illustrate. Wednesday the 14th, it's dry, just a few showers perhaps in the far southwest, but a fine day in much of the United Kingdom. Temperatures cooler here in the north and the east because there is now a northeasterly breeze. It's still warm in southern and western counties. Thursday it's a very very similar story. Friday not much changing at all. It's rinse and repeat. And then into the weekend more of the same. I think it's probably just worth noting that Near to the east coast, it's likely to be cloudier at times, and on occasion, the cloud could push further inland and affect different parts of the United Kingdom. Sunday and Monday, uh, using the overview charts, not a great deal is changing. It's staying settled. Temperatures pretty respectable, not, not exceptionally warm, but certainly pleasant in sunny periods. The Mark Reps G Ensemble Plot for London, supports the same idea going through the first week. This is showing forecast temperatures, so they're climbing during the days, dipping through the nights, etc, etc. And the individual lines there are packed closely together, which means basically that all of the runs within the ensemble model are going for the same type of thing. It's only when we get towards the end there, the 18th, 19th, for 20th, that the spread starts to increase and forecast confidence begins reducing. But the message is quite a consistent one here. Now, in terms of rainfall, these are the forecast accumulations for days not five from the ECM and GFS models, both showing five to 10 millimeters or thereabouts in parts of Wales and Southern England. It's worth though pointing out that's all falling at the very start of the forecast period because there are still those showers in places. But look at that, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Northern England, central parts of England as well, zero millimetres, no measurable rain according to these. Jumping forward to the 10 day accumulations, now there are some changes showing up, the GFS in particular on the right, going for more rain in the north and the west. ECM though on the left, keeping it mostly dry, just a little bit of rain in places, but so, these are indicating differences between the two models, between the day five to day 10 part of the forecast period, but some indications at least from the GFS that we could be starting to see things moving, change on the way. Now, what the deterministic models show more generally as we head towards the end of the first week, are they all in agreement on the general pattern? Well, here's the GFS on Tuesday the 20th of May. As we've already seen from the sequence, it's basically high pressure dominated, although some indications here that there could be some showers, you can see lower heights there. The Canadian model, a little bit more mixed, it has to be said. There's areas of low pressure to the west, to the south, high pressure to the north, probably mostly dry at this point, but it does indicate the possibility, at least, that we could be seeing some hefty showers approaching, were it to be correct. The German icon, high pressure dominating, the European ECM, very similar, high pressure dominating. 
the artificial intelligence version of the same model. Well, here also chance perhaps of showery conditions beginning to propagate up from the south. Finally, the UK Met Office Global high pressure there, slap bang over the United Kingdom. Taking them all together, some differences in the details. It certainly looks as though high pressure will be having a good deal of influence as we go towards the end of the first week, but there are some signs that showers may develop in places, details to be confirmed. So how do things develop as we head through the second week? Well, of course, it's just about the trends and the probabilities of this range using the ensemble data. The 16-day GEFS plot for London here, 850 HPA temperatures across the top. Most of the runs there slightly above the average going through the second week. I think it's just worth as well mentioning there is quite a big spread there, a number bringing in significantly cooler air, and towards the end, a few bringing in significantly warmer air. So as we're heading towards the end of May, just a chance that we could start to see a plume type pattern develop. It's a minority of runs which are showing it, but of course worth paying attention to as we head into the meteorological summer. So that could come about if low pressure becomes centre to the west for south, west for UK, high pressure to the east, and we start pulling up very warm air from southern Europe, from North Africa. But along the bottom, there aren't any spikes to start off with, or not very many at all. However, their number increases. So the chance of rain is what's being shown by those, and it's growing as we go through through the second week, particularly from around the 24th of May. And it's indicating that the pattern may be starting to change, reorientate itself, and that could lead to more unsettled weather feeding in from the Atlantic also it would lead to the possibility of those plume type patterns showing up, the very warm conditions. Two meter temperatures for London. There isn't a very strong trend here. There's lots of the orange through the days, quite a bit of a pinky orange, the next category up, the 21 to 25. And towards the end, a little bit of red actually appears. Now that would tie in with what I've been discussing about the possibility of a plume uh, pattern developing. It's worth saying though, there's only 10% there at the most, that's about three runs in the ensemble, so it's a low chance of it happening, at least according to this data. The overnight lows trending upwards a little bit, but nothing too notable there. Up to Manchester, and it's a similar story. There are possibly, I think, more rain spikes along the bottom, so it would indicate that if we are going to be seeing a more unsettled pattern uh, returning, it would be a westerly based one. The two meter temperature data tables on Manchester, perhaps showing more of a trend here. It looks like there's a cooling trend as we go through the second week, at least through the days, not much changing by night. Finally, the view for Glasgow, upper air temperatures close to, or maybe slightly above the average. In terms of rain along the bottom there, there are certainly more spikes here than there were on the graphs for Manchester and London. So it looks like wetter conditions will be returning. I'm going to throw in a caveat here, which is that there has been a tendency in recent days for the return of a more changeable pattern to be pushed back a little bit on updated computer model runs. So it could still get delayed or whatever, may not happen in this way. But it, I think there is a reasonable amount of confidence now that something will be changing through the last week or so of May, but it's not definite. The two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow, more of a downwards trend manifesting itself here. It's quite clear, um, relatively warm to begin with, but dipping back to around the average, possibly a number of those runs even going a little bit below it through the days. For nighttime lows, actually quite cool. There's still lots of dark green in there, runs going for between one and five, even a little bit of blue. I think a lot of that's due to clear periods forming widely, at least early on. Towards the end there, perhaps some of an upwards trend in overnight temperatures. So through the days, we're seeing temperatures dipping and through the nights, maybe just ticking up a little bit as the more changeable conditions start to develop. Rainfall through the second week using the ECM probability charts. These course show the chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on the first three days. You can see on the left, it's a very low chance indeed. It's between 0 and 10%, but 
the middle chart it's increasing slightly and then it's increasing significantly by the third chart on the right up to about 40 percent and the green trading which indicates the areas of high risk are focused on western britain and northern ireland suggesting indeed that the weather is going to be coming in from the Atlantic. In the following three days that pattern is very marked. The wettest conditions are likely to be in the northwest of the UK and that would also fit in very nicely indeed with the idea that uh, areas of low pressure will be starting to feed in from the west. The mean service level pressure data table for York going through the second week also shows that the likelihood that pressure will be declining. To start off with, it's mostly yellows and oranges in these columns. Those runs are generally close to or above the average pressure levels for the time of the year. But look at the return of the green. It becomes a very significant player through the second half of the second week. Green is used to indicate runs which are showing areas of low pressure affecting the UK's weather. The GEFS mean surface level pressure snapshot chart for Friday the 23rd, high pressure there to the southwest, close to the Azores, still probably having influence at times over the UK, at least a lot of the runs in the ensemble would suggest that to be the case because this is generated by averaging out all of the individual runs. But it does look a little bit more flaky than it has been in recent times, a more mixed feel to things. The ECM ensemble also suggesting that we could be starting to see changes taking place. So to summarise week one, mostly dry, although there is a growing chance of showers later. Sunny periods develop widely but it could be cloudier on occasion, particularly in the east and near the east coast. Quite warm overall, although cooler near the east coast and when the cloud moves in. Week two, mostly settled to begin with, but the risk of showers or longer spells of rain increases, especially through the second half. Temperatures close to or above the average. So, there we have it. Change looks as though it could be on the way as we go through the second week, but as ever at this range, it's very difficult to be at all confident that it will play out like the computer models are suggesting at the present time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful as ever then if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so you'll not be missing any of my future updates. Also, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye. <laughs>